hope that you are being challenged by um, the messages, the lectures that are teaching us to understand correctly the covenant and to realign ourselves back to what is God's greatest desire and his greatest heart. So what I wanted to share today briefly was this message that I'm recently sharing with the children in my field. It's part of our overall curriculum in MMC to train children in the gospel message. And 14 years ago, um, I started a school in Korea called the English Mission School. And we had a service or we had the school system where we had worship every single day, a daily worship with the children where they would hear the word of God that connects from day to day so that their understanding of God's word was um, building upon each other day after day, week after week, and then year after year. Because our program was not only for the kindergarten preschool, it was for up to sixth grade. So if the youngest ones came in around age three or four, then they would leave when they were 12 or 13. So it was a nine year course that they would stay with me. And there would be every day of worship, at least 200 days of worship, corporate worship with children, 30 minutes without fail. I mean, imagine that, right? <laughs> so it was truly the blessed, the most blessed time um, where we can spend time with the, with the children. And every second month of the entire school curriculum, we would be going over the gospel message as a chant. And we would use American Sign Language to teach the children the chant and we would have songs that reinforce it and it would break down the gospel message bit by bit. Now, how many of you have reached lecture 15? Did you actually hear it at all? That's okay, no pressure. It's like a couple weeks away, it's okay. But when you get to lecture 15, which is the very last one, um, you're gonna see the gospel presentation that I, I normally give to non-believers or new believers. Okay, and I'll give you an example. So this is my little folder that I made for myself that has all of our content uh, from this class. Okay, so I suggest maybe you can make a little folder for yourself too, because the content is so important. But on the last day, the last page of the, the outline, you will you will see this page, right? Can you see? Yeah. It's kind of like the way of salvation, a diagram where we preach the gospel to people. So in this last page, I'm going to, I have it in the video. You'll be seeing it very soon, but I tell you how I share the gospel message to non-believers or new believers or even old believers. But this children's gospel chant is exactly the same as this gospel presentation, but for children. And I make it like a chant. So in my church and in their Saturday ministry that I do with June, every every Saturday and every week. And we also volunteer at a local uh, preschool, a Christian preschool that has invited us to give uh, their weekly chapel. We've been sharing this gospel message chant. And so we are on week number um, six right now. And I thought, you know, I wanna share this with our brothers and sisters around the world because I feel that the message is needed for all of us, considering the things that we are all going through. So. Here's the chant. It starts with creation. And if you know this chant, which many of you do know, about a third of you should know this, um, it, it will, you can just do it with me if you want to. Okay. So the chant is like this. God made man to be with him. Man was happy and had no sin. But something happened. Satan tempted man. Man sinned. And all the problems began. That's the Genesis 3 problem, right? Children of the devil. Oh, what a low level. People want to meet God, but they worship rocks and trees. By following money from sin, we can't be free. This is the problem of idol worship. Now, people are tired and sad. They get worried, jealous, and mad. This is the problem of mental sickness, mental and emotional breakdowns. 
all of a result of being separated from God. And now we're at the sixth day, which is about the physical problems that manifest in our lives. It goes like this. The people get sick. People are poor. People like to fight and get into wars. That's right. Okay, so they're very simple sentences. They actually all rhyme in English, but the content is something that even young children can't understand. So what does it mean? Well, everybody gets sick sometimes. Kids get fevers and they have to take medicine. They understand what physical illness feels like and nobody likes that. Nobody likes feeling this way. But we are not only talking about when you get a headache or a stomach ache, but we're talking about incurable diseases that come to people's lives that cause um, so much heartache and pain. Things like pandemics, <laughs> right? Like things like cancer and pandemics, like this COVID-19 problem that is now ongoing for a couple of years, um, all of our lives are affected by it. But you cannot say that it's just, um, just a natural phenomenon. This is absolutely a curse. And it's absolutely a result that comes all the way from people's separation from God. We're not meant to have diseases and we're not meant to have such misery in our lives. Um, and the, the problem, oops, I'm sorry, the problem of poverty. Homelessness is on the rise here, even in America. You know, so many people have this image of America being an affluent country and everybody is so rich. Um, that's actually not true. The homelessness problem right now is so serious. It is so serious in, in major metropolitan areas um, that the government doesn't even know what to do. And that causes sickness and disease and the drug problem, it spreads. And then there's violence and crime. It's becoming so uh, dangerous to even go outside in the streets. But the people who are homeless, they're not evil, but this is a problem that might have a come to them, not just because of poor choices, but because of family line, generational er curses. And um, it's a spiritual problem before anything else. And there are, entire cities that are under the poverty line, right? Where it's, there's not clean, sanitation is an issue, health is an issue, education is an issue. The poverty is very serious in so many places to the point where um, it's, uh, people will live off of less than a dollar or $2 um, a day or even a week you know, and they're looking for food and in places they shouldn't get it. This is heartbreaking as it is, this is the reality of our world today. The, the real spiritual problems that became manifest in the physical life. And what about our relationship problems? Fighting. I mean, you don't have to teach children how to fight because they naturally do it so well. Little kids, little kids can fight as well. Siblings are actually the meanest, you know, brother and sister, you know, they can be really vicious. Um, but it's not only at the schools that we see such violent crimes, it's actually in the homes. How many families do you know that are broken, divorced, um, with domestic violence and, you know, remarriages or children out of wedlock and single parent homes, and then children being abandoned or abused, neglected. Now, these are um, serious issues of our society. And then war, which sadly is happening right now, right now as we speak. The Russia-Ukrainian war is um, sometimes it's hard for us to grasp the reality of it, even though there's so much very clear and detailed footage about it. It's almost that we've been desensitized because of all the media or TikTok and dramas and movies out there. We don't really see that this is real, right? 
Now, these are old pictures. This is a picture of the Korean War. And young Korean people today are experiencing a lot of, you know, affluence and wealth and development. But just about 50 years ago, 60, 70 years ago, this was Korea. It was in shambles after three years of a terrible war that destroyed so many lives, millions of lives. And the children were most affected. This is the war in Syria. Um, and it had gone on and on and on for so long. Imagine the trauma that the people are going through. And now today with the Ukrainian war, the children are displaced. They have to be, they have to leave the country. Millions of them are uh, refugees now. No way of getting education. Many of you also have seen this kind of terrible situation in your own cities, in your own homes, you know, this kind of a tragedy. And, you know, depending on how old your children are, you're not going to show them graphic pictures of the war right now. But what, what, what is important for us to recognize is that these physical problems are real and we cannot try to hide that or try to cover it up. Instead, we need to talk about why it happened. Why is it happening? And that's why we need to teach children the gospel message. We have to teach them about the reason why there is so much suffering in the world. It is because we are separated from God. And so now I'd want to take it more on a personal level. Do you ever feel like, you know, because of the issues going around in your life, maybe financial strain, health issues, um, relationship issues, right? Conflicts with people that drive you crazy or hurt people have hurt you. Um, and then, you know, with, with the situation of maybe persecution in your country or actual conflict with people groups that, that cause a lot of pain and suffering, you know, you might feel like your life is like you're in the middle of a storm. Have you ever felt that way? Yeah, you cannot if you say yeah, yeah. Okay. Sometimes uh, we feel like, you know, we're going through our own storms. Um, because of sickness, because of poverty, because of actual fights with people and, you know, national issues. What the world cannot offer an answer for us. The world cannot offer an answer for us. And when you are in a, in a storm like that, it, you cannot fight that. Can you fight the power of wind and power of rain and storm and a tsunami or natural disaster? There's no way to escape it. But there is a way. There is a way. And that is when you understand and when you recognize there is one that is greater than the storm. One that is greater than the storm. It says in Luke chapter 8, the story of Jesus in the storm. And he was asleep. And the disciples were about to, you know, drown and they were so terrified because of the wind and the rain and they didn't know what would happen to them. So they were calling out to him and even crying out saying, Jesus, don't you care that we're gonna die? That was their reaction. Don't you care? They said, you know, that's a very strong um, accusation to the Lord, <laughs> you know, just because we're in our problems, it does not mean God doesn't care. It can never mean that because God is a loving God. He's a consistent God. He never changes. He is a God of love. He is love. Okay. So the problems we face, first of all, recognize it comes from Genesis three. Okay. All pain and suffering started because of that. But then inside of the suffering, inside of the pain and the storms going on, he is sovereign over this. You are safe because he's with you in that boat. What does he say? He gets right up and he says three words. And he said, peace, be still. He tells it to the storm, peace, be still. And in that moment, the storm was calm. Um, he showed his power. He showed his authority to the disciples. He didn't rebuke them, but he did say, hey, where's your faith? Hello. You know, we just saw miracle after miracle and I'm here in the boat with you. It's not that he doesn't know. What does he say to us? 
peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. I really believe that he never promised we'll have a problem-free life. God never promised that suffering will never come your way. You should actually expect it, he said, because this life that we're living is temporary and we are in a wilderness. We are not in a home of our own. We are in a journey to eternity. Our identity is with God, right? And our home is in the kingdom of God. And if there's any reason for us to be here is to experience his power, to witness, be a witness of that power and experience his peace because he is with us. What do we teach children then when they actually have conflicts, when they feel upset and angry and frustrated? And, you know, who, who among us are going to be calm when there's going to be a problem? We are not calm. I mean, we are not calm. <laughs> okay. So the key is little by little, okay, we train our hearts and our minds okay, to refocus quicker. If it took you 10 days to come back to God's covenant, you know, with more prayer and training and continual hearing of the word and your faith rises, it will take you nine days after that, and then eight days, and then pretty soon five minutes. What, what would happen if you can realign, uh, you know, pivot yourself back to focusing on Christ within a minute, within a minute, you know, of the storm rising, and you can say, no, peace, be still in the name of Jesus because he is sovereign over all of this. So what we try to teach our children is how to be a star, how to be a star. And what is that? It means to stop. T is take a deep breath and relax. You're going to hear this a lot from me, you know, throughout the courses and throughout the training as we go deeper into children's ministry, because you know, we cannot teach children what we are not enjoying first. <laughs> you know, uh, we want to be the person you want your children to be. We, we need to be that person first. It doesn't mean you have to be perfect. No, but it does mean that um, we are witnesses. We are witnesses of the work that God is doing inside of us. So be a star is a way for us to say, you know what? The storms start rising up then. You need to take a moment to give your brain some oxygen and get back to that position where you are able to pray. When your emotions are really high, prayer is not the first thing you want to do. You just want to shout and scream and curse and solve the problem. Okay, but you're no longer, you know, in control anymore, right? Christ is your Lord and your master. And so we need to take a step back and say, okay, I need to stop. I need to calm myself. And when you're calm, it's much easier to pray. I've never seen anyone angry and praying. I've never seen anybody angry and praying. You have to calm down to pray. So then we teach the children to do the star prayer. And the star prayer, simply put, is this. I am safe. Jesus is the Christ. You know, a lot of our emotional anxiety and stress and fear anger it's coming it's coming because of fear you know you're afraid of something not working out for you but is jesus the christ has he finished it on the cross is he sovereign yes he is and so we need to confess that again and tell your spirit you know what i am safe it doesn't mean every single prayer is going to be answered you know i prayed for my mom to live longer so that she can complete her India missions. I prayed for many things to happen, you know, and in God's perfect timing, the answer was either yes, no, or wait. You know, for my mom, in her fight with cancer, it was a no, and she passed away um, over a year ago. And that was hard because we love her and we miss her. But you know what? I'm safe. She is safe with the Lord. And I am safe because Jesus is the Christ. And the more I confess that he has truly healed and, and given me peace and our whole family peace, you know, and it's really an amazing thing to have that kind of peace. I'm calm. Why? How can we be calm when there's a storm? Because God is with me. He is with me and I can handle this because I'm a child of God. I can handle this. 
So believe it or not, we teach children to see that say this star prayer. And many children have testified that they, they have learned to control their anger. They're learning to pray and, and become in a place where they can see the Lord work. And our teachers, I hope, I hope it's true, um, have also learned how to become more aware of their you know, emotional ups and downs and are able to overcome the storms that come their way. And the last thing I want to share, these four truths, if this can be imprinted in young children, nothing can overcome them. God loves me. God is with me right now. God has a plan, even in this mess, and God is in control, right? He, these, these are very simple sentences that any child can memorize and learn, but they are deeply rooted in, in, in firm theological background. Because our God is, is the eternal, infinite, amazing God. There's nothing that he cannot see and he cannot do. And all we need to do is trust him. Is that an amen? Is that an amen? Yes. So uh, that's the message that I share with children, you know, of course, in, in, their, in their level, of course. But I thought we needed to, we need to learn to be a star and we need to transcend the storms of our lives and be still in front of God. So even though Jesus said to the storm, be still, he's also telling you, be still and know that I am God. Amen. Amen. Thank you.